well, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing and whoever you're lucky enough to be doing it to, hope you're doing it live on a Saturday afternoon. I've got the roast dinner in the oven. Junior is listening to a couple of audio books. Uh, the missus is happy as a lark and I am pumping out the Casio organ tunes. No, it's not really me. And doing a tactical advanced guide on the IS-6, which is a lovely thing to be doing. Thanks very much, humans. This is a patron-sponsored post. If you haven't already, please check out the link to possibly consider sponsoring the channel. If not, sit back, enjoy, take it all in, and uh, I don't know if you'll learn anything, but at least you'll listen to a grumpy old Aussie bastard do his best to work through World of Tanks Blitz. IS-6, what's good about it? Well, it's a hell of a brawler, uh, and it's particularly relevant in today's game because we now have the IS-3 Defender. Marathon has just finished, and we've got a whole new bunch of Tier 8 heavies in the mix. What that means is that there's plenty of heavy tanks for you to brawl with and fight, and that's all well and good as far as I'm concerned, because it's a great part of the game. And um, it's a little bit medium dominated, particularly at the moment by the T-54, the Object 140, the T-62A. I mean, uh, Russian mediums are just having an absolute field day out there, and any time I get to see more heavies in the field, I'm happy about it. What should you be doing to be more successful with the I-6? Well, I'm not the greatest I-6 driver. I hover around 68 to 70 percent generally in the tank. Do a lot of solos in it. It's a great tank to grind credits in. Uh, you get premium matchmaking for those of you that haven't experienced premium matchmaking before. It's a wonderful thing. You never see above tier nine, which is one tier above the tank. It's fantastically armored. It's one of those funny things where the the tail of the tape really doesn't tell the story. The thickness of the armor is not that special. It's the superb angling of the armor that makes this tank a real handful. It's got that awkward, steeply angled armor all around its chassis. And it means you will often bounce shots. You have no earthly reason to believe you can bounce from the rear of this tank, uh, just like you bounce shots on the, on the front of the tank. The steep angles make the effective armor really useful. Uh, you can create auto bounce zones. You can really punish lower tier tanks. You don't bleed hit points a lot like you do in some of those really nice gun machines which pay for that great rate of fire or really accurate weaponry with very poor armor profiles. Um, so it's if you're not the most advanced player, this kind of a tank is perfect for you. It will bounce the shots without you having to worry too much about the angling. There is a weak point uh, underneath the gun where the driver's hatch is, but a lot of people don't really pay much attention to that, and they always go for the lower glacis, which is quite knife-like and thin. It's still very hittable, but as long as you're driving the tank correctly, you'll do quite well in it. Now, as to driving it correctly, how do you want to be driving it? Well, for once, I'm going to advocate a very aggressive tact. I usually like to to take my time with tanks uh, and it's not my cup of tea to push super hard and super aggressively but I love getting in a, a heavy platoon with uh, a mate like Pimp Daddy here in the IS-6 Fearless. You'll see that in a second. That's a special IS-6. He tells me they only give that one to blokes with enormous knobs but I reckon he's telling furfies on me on that one. I don't believe that for a second, Pimp Daddy. Uh, you want to team up with another IS-6 or an IS-3 uh, or, or anything with premium matchmaking and actually go hard in in games. There are certain times where you can't, and I'll show you one of those games, but it's got a lot of natural elements to it that really help you succeed whether you want to or not. Firstly, the armor is excellent, which we've discussed. Uh, I won't belabor the point, but secondly, the profile is excellent. It's quite low to the ground. Your turret is very strong too. It's certainly not impenetrable, but uh, it's tough to pin the weak points either side of the gun and on top. Uh, they're not exactly glaring weak spots either. And as long as you keep the tank moving, the tank will constantly change its weak points. When you're driving it, if you're at distance and you're standing off from your target, it's a lot easier for them to line up a weak point on your tank and hit it. Uh, if you are actually up close and personal, um, the the tank is a lot more likely, and, and much more likely, sorry, to to get a bounce. 
simply because as you turn the tank left to right, the panels on the IS-6 go from auto pen zones for your enemy to auto bounce zones uh, and back again. It's a, a really funny thing to watch and you have to play against the tank to realize this, but up close and personal, face hugging, side hugging, side scraping off walls, bouncing over the top of little ridges like this and then bouncing back, that's how you want to be playing the tank. You don't want to be standing off if at all possible. Now, I'm going to highlight what I'm talking about there by the tank will just bounce and work for you. And it's one of the best things about the tank. It does the work whether you want it to or not. You can see the rest of the team has managed to die for pretty much nothing so far. Um, everyone came out and then everyone one at a time drove back across the railway line into seven waiting red tanks, which was great fun to watch from my perspective, but not particularly helpful. Uh, so here we go. T32, we're gonna drive past and we're gonna start altering the angles. Now he's gonna pen us, the reason being, and this is something you need to know, anytime you're driving a tank that relies on angles and not armor thickness, if the enemy is above you, it flattens your armor profile out and makes it a lot less effective. So effective armor is the key point there. In reality, if you were to stand this armor up on an end to end on a straight line, it's not that thick at all. So it's the slope that helps you and that is completely negated when someone's above you. Now you can see here, I'm driving and getting my tank all the time as close as possible to the biggest threat that I've got on the battlefield. At the moment, it's the VK. Previously, it was the T32. In a second, there's gonna be a Tiger II and you can see I'm bouncing shots off my ass still as it turns around. I'm not actually working for those shots or those bounces. I'm just keeping the tank moving at all times and it makes it really tough for these guys to pen. Now they're gonna get me eventually. And again, flattening the armor out there with the Tiger II, you can't help it. If he's above you, the armor is flatter. And then we're turning again. And as we turn, there are shots available. We're using obstacles, putting them between me and the rest of the guys, but he makes a good shot here, the Churchill, um, in a second anyway. Uh, and that, that saves the day because that VK at tier six may well have struggled to pen. You can see what I'm talking about then. If you're in brawls and in situations like that, you wanna get close to the enemy tank. On your reload, hug the enemy tank. Keep your upper glacis turning left and right, right and left, and it will make it really difficult for them to actually pen you. You're also gonna see what I'm talking about with flattening armor out, and it's one of the reasons why if you're fighting a T-54 or someone that you really struggle to pen, Getting above them will negate their huge armor advantage, as you'll see in just a short wee while. Now, Pimpo gets stuck here. The rest of their team turns up as we are pushing forward really aggressively, and Pimp gets pincered, which is unfortunate, but just the way of the world, you can't be invulnerable at all times. And Pimp was pretty invulnerable last time uh, when we were on Winter Malinovka. T54, he's doing the wrong thing. He's coming out sideways. Uh, even if he wasn't, we're high enough up now that if he turns his arm up the right way around, it's flat and it's really easy for us to pen. Now you can see I'm side scraping here, straight off that wall. The scent's gonna pen me here because I've made the mistake of getting too close to the rock and I can't actually turn my turret or my chassis to the right and left. However, I've backed off. I'm side scraping again, just off that edge. We pump right through, track him, get another bounce, and we're in a wonderful position here. Another bounce from the Tiger, load up HE, hit him right on top of the turret, let the reticle go all the way down, and that sense being left in a very awkward and compromising situation. And you'll see here just how much the armor gets flattened out. How open is that when he's, I mean, I missed the shot, but you can see what I'm talking about. When you're above someone, look at that flat, flat surface there. No angle on that armor whatsoever. Very, very easy to pen. And that's an easy one. So what about when there's a lot of big guns in the game? Let's have a look at that. This is a tier nine match. Now what I really wanna do here, and I tell these guys, is I want the TDs behind me. I'll spot for them. I'll keep them in a target rich environment feeding the, uh, the veggie patch, as they like to say. So everyone behind me, I'm just gonna water the garden, they can, they can watch it grow. Um, 
and I'm gonna have to type that out to the team here, I think, because you can see there's a T95 on the other side, there's a, an IS-8, they've got an M103. That's three pretty heavy guns for me to be dealing with, and very difficult to pen. This tank doesn't have a nice pen at all. Even with its APCR, uh, some tanks like the E75 and the T54 are nigh on impenetrable on a flat, even surface as you look ahead. Now, I've been spotted here, but I'm in a really good position. You can see how low this tank is to the ground. All they can see of me at the moment is my turret. And that is not an easy pen. Even for one of those tanks like an M103, uh, it's a very small target and there's certainly plenty of places for it to wick and bounce off. It's only a 75 to weight. They're always fun. Um, the T28 is moving in the wrong direction now. You can see what I'm talking about. I turn the gun on the side. I've pushed up. Get my shot off. Pull back. You've got to use that gun depression over the side. And it means paying severe advantage, uh, attention to the rest of the map. Because if you're using gun depression over the side, you're exposing the weakest point of your tank. Now the T28 wants to attack. I'm not going to attack. What I'm going to do is move up here and start spotting more targets, which is what you should be doing in a match like this. You're pretty low to the ground, you can see. That ridge is all I really need to hide me. I'm probably gonna cop one in the backside here very soon, but you know, all's fair in love and water tank splits. Um, backing up just a touch too much, exposing a little bit of that right, but you can look how low to the ground the tank is. I'm gonna side scrape here off there just in case someone is over there and it gives them a very, very tough to penetrate side armor profile and hides that lower glacis. That's what I'm doing the whole time. Now there's the T95, really wanted to light him up. The rest of the team is just taking their time, building a platform. Very boring, but we're going from position to position. Strong position to strong position. Staying low to the ground, staying behind cover. We do this very poorly. We're going to cop one from the IS-3 Defender soon, I think. Um, there's the M103. Straight through the tracks with APCR. Even though we have a T95 next to us, we're not panicking. Switch to HE, hoping to get a shot at that 103. Nope, it didn't pull in, and we copped one from the Defender. Now, Reds have had enough. They're pushing down. We've switched to APCR. There's another IS-6. And you can see flat angles. You never want to be flat in this tank. Chi Re as well. Again, moving forward. We are hull down this entire time, which is really nice. He turns his turret back just in time to save himself from that big HE shell. There's the ICU-152. We're still hull down. They're not going to see us over there, but they get us from the top. That M103 is still watching, ever vigilant. We load up HE again, and we are very keen, but he's already gone. Defender, HE instead. You can use a nice blend of HE, AP, SAR, and AP for this tank. There are plenty of light tanks in the game which require HE. There you go. The back door of the Chiri. Very easy pen. And again, that IS-6 up there. He'd be a HE shot if we could get it, but it's already gone. So... I mean, that's nothing that terribly exciting, is it? But look, we've just ground down a, a tier nine game by spotting enemies for our team, uh, making sure that we were behind cover most of the time and utilizing these rocks and the tiny little ridges to make sure that we did our level best. You wanna be doing that in this tank at all times. It's such a graceful brawling tank uh, and even when, I mean, this T95 can pen us like a knife through butter, but we're mobile enough and low enough profile that he just doesn't get the opportunity. And so we take our time, just dial it up. He'd been tracked and dial on back. Smart play for an I6 driver with a T95 is not to give them any shots, especially not when you're on as low hit points as I am. <laughs> So there you go, boys and girls, that's the IS-6. It's a very straightforward drive. If you're having any struggles with it, remember, always jink and jerk it round. 
make sure that you are peekabooming and you're not exposing yourself when you don't have a round in the barrel. And if you are up against superior odds, try to side hug or face hug, side scrape off one of these rocks, stay behind a, a low berm. All these kind of things will make your life a hell of a lot more successful and your drive in the IS6 a lot more fun uh, and it will certainly earn you plenty of credits. And at the end of the day, that's why you're driving a tier eight premium tank, uh, whether it be a heavy, a medium or a TD, you wanna earn some money and you wanna win while you're doing it. And that's certainly something that the IS6 takes care of on both fronts. So I hope you've enjoyed that, uh, everyone. I'm very, very happy to be doing these tactical guides. I think they're a lot more interesting than just your straight up reviews to do on my end anyway. We're gonna be doing the Leo one very soon, maybe the FV4202, the Comet. It's been a long time since we drove the Comet, the SU152, lots and lots coming down the pipe and we've got some official wargaming stuff coming in the next month that should prove to be super exciting. So if you haven't already, please do think about sponsoring the channel for as little as a dollar a month. You can help churn out Blitz magic and uh, help keep the wolf from the door here at Shea Bushka. I'm Bushka on Blitz. You've been fantastic. For all your tanking needs, love and worries, drop by the YouTube comment section and say good day. Until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Thank you.